Hi, I'm Daniel, and before the episode starts, I want to briefly talk to you about the Garden Outreach Project, a WCF program focused on putting faith into action. Our mission is to inspire and support Christadelphians in North America to share Christ's love through outreach initiatives. This is done by facilitating national and local outreach activities, supplying resources, and providing funds to help brothers and sisters serve those in need. For example, in 2020, over 40 ecclesial groups participated in our Bags of Love initiative, which saw over 800 sleeping bags distributed to shelters and those without a home. If you, your ecclesia, or CYC want to learn more and get involved with our latest initiative, please visit our website at www.thegardenoutreach.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Garden Outreach for the latest news and encouragement. And now, here's the show. Welcome back to A Little Faith. I'm Levi, and I've got Coletzo with me. Hi, Coletzo. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks, and you, Levi. I'm good, yeah. Um, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. I, we have never met. This is, our, this is our first time meeting each other together on this Zoom. I'm looking forward to this. So where are you from? Glad to be Let's here. Say, where, so. where do you live? So I'm currently now staying in Cape Town, which is in South Africa. However, I was born and raised in Johannesburg, which is in Gauteng. So it's more like I'm still in South Africa, but then now I'm currently in Cape Town. And I've been here far, now for three years. Oh, okay. How, how far away is Cape Town from Johannesburg? It's a two-hour flight, mm -hmm. and it's, I think, 14-hour drive. Okay. What was it like growing up for you? So we're now reflecting. I'm happy to share. So as I mentioned, I'm from Tembisa. I'm the second born out of 10, but then, like, never got married. So it's, like, four on my mom's side and then six on my dad's side. Mm -hmm. So I ended up growing up with my granny. Uh, it was quite a good childhood, I'd say. Stayed with my four cousins, so we always shared a bed. Everything was happy. We were, I would say, we were happy. We still happy. My family, we grew up as Roman Catholic church, but then I never got baptized there, or it wasn't like my my mom or dad were never ha like involved at church. Mm -hmm. So that was that happening, and then we moved from one place to another place with my granny, and then when we moved, we basically stopped attending church mm -hmm. with the Roman Catholic church. Right. But however, there was this little one church we were attending. I forgot the name now. We're still young. But it wasn't, <laughs> it was more of like worshiping the songs with just singing and they believed in God. And for me, it was more enjoying the Sunday school part. So I always, always found church a, a safe place. Mm -hmm. But however, the pastor then stopped picking us up. So more like we don't have any church to go to. And then my neighbor invited me to the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Um, so like she, they both knew like I was always keen on learning about the Bible and knowing more about the Bible. I'll ask them questions, and so they invited me to the Seventh Day Adventist Church, which was now in South Africa. They attended on Saturdays. So going up was more like I would attend church because it was a safe place for me to be at. So Monday to Friday at school, and Saturday would be then church. However, the teachings there were not what I thought was best when I then met the Christadelphians. So while I was, I was attending the Seventh Day Adventist Church, which was on Sundays, Saturdays, sorry, Saturdays, she paid for me to do a course uh, at Apiwe, where it was Jamie for Jesus, so learning how to play a guitar. Okay. So there, that's where I met Liesel. And uh -huh. we were basically playing songs. I remember like learning songs, but uh, the, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, <laughs> but however, it was a good song. And she, she was so helpful in that sense. And then she invited me for Sunday school, saying, we'd like you to join our Sunday school, see what it's about. Cool. So it was more... Oh. Yeah. How old were you? How, how old were you now when you met when you met Liesl through jamming for Jesus? So I was doing grade eight, so I was only fourteen. Okay, 
Yeah. So you were, wow. four, you were 14 and, and jamming for Jesus is an outreach program that the Christophians were doing kind of teaching people to play music. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then she invited me for Sunday school. And so it will be like Saturdays I'll attend the seven days of Adventist church. Right. And then Sunday will be the Christophian Sunday school. Okay. But it came a point where it didn't just feel right. Like I'll always ask questions on Saturdays, but then I wouldn't get like the answers or answers from the Bible. It would be more like verbally and from their experiences. And then when I ask questions on the Sunday school, there will be concrete from the Bible, like Bible verses they will share on what it's about and how. So that's when I had to decide to go for Christadelphians. Did that happen quickly or just kind of over the next couple of years or? It was a couple of months, I would say. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't like years. It was more in months. However, I kept going back to the Seventh Day Adventist Church. But you know when you don't feel, you don't have that sense of belonging anymore? Right. Like you feel like you don't fit in at that church. But however, you're feeling more welcomed with the other church. And you can be free. You can be yourself as well. So... That's when I then decided, let me go for Christadelphians. And doing that, there were Bible classes on Wednesdays as well. So it was more Wednesdays and now Sundays. So gradually then I decided to just do Christadelphians. So I'll say it's over like five, six months. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool though. That's, yeah. that's And that's interesting that you felt like you were just getting the right answers, but, and that's one thing, but the other thing is just, you had a feeling kind of like you felt like you belonged. Yeah. Nice. So you've been Christophian ever since. When were you baptized? I was baptized 2015. Okay. So from 2011, 12, 13, 14, three years later, that's when I decided to get baptized. Nice. And uh, yeah, talk about what you did after that, what you've done for school and stuff. Okay, <laughs> so before, like when? You studied to be a Montessori teacher as well, right? Oh, yeah. The goal, of course, was to become a doctor or a paramedic, okay. I would say. It was more helping other people. I think I had that, just want to help people. So I think mm-hmm. I was doing grade 12, but then after grade 12, of course, I passed, but then it wasn't like good marks. So I took a gap year, and during that gap year, like I've always been into a lot of trust. So during the gap year, I asked if I can volunteer and help them out, either with like gardening or doing like crash courses, attending crashes and playing with children there. And while doing that, I think that's when I... I felt the need that I can also make a difference in this young age. Mm-hmm. So while volunteering as well. So it was more of, I think I would like to do early childhood development. Okay. And so Cutter Trust was like, how about you then do the crash course first and see how you feel about it after then. And then yeah. of course I did it. And it was at a moment doing it, I also enjoyed it. But of course, there were thoughts like you are a man, you cannot be an early childhood educator. Uh Um, So it was more like I I told them, okay, I think I want to venture more into this early childhood development. So they were like, the best thing for you to do or to study early childhood development would be to become a mentorsory educator. Okay. At that time, I didn't know who (laughs) Montessori was or who Maria Montessori was. So I took that time as well to just learn more about the Montessori philosophy. And yeah, I studied the next year. And later on, one thing I know is I'm here in Cape Town. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about the crash course, and that's something we have to translate for us in the States. But it, it's a, in the U.S., we call it preschool, right? So you, Or like yeah. nursery. And you were, so you were drawn to that when you were in your gap year. So you graduated. And then you took, kind of took a year off and you were working in the, with the Cuddle Trust, which is a Christadelphian organization there. And you were working with those creches or, or preschools, as we would call them. A preschool, yeah, preschool education. Right. And then yeah. you felt drawn to 
to that early childhood education. And then uh, Lilandi introduced you to Montessori. Is that right? Yes. What was that training like? The training was quite, it was good, I would say, because I had support from, I would say from Lilandi as well, and also from church. Um, as much as I was thinking, it's not mainly enough for a guy to do this kind of work in South Africa, I'd say, I don't know about in the US. Um, but the training was was quite good. I enjoyed it. Um, I remember also attending classes there, like being the only guy. It was it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. I'm still enjoying it now as well. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, I'm, I'm I'm actually looking at in the U.S. We only have 11 percent of teachers in the U.S are or of, of early childhood teachers are male so one out of every 10 yeah that's so, in the u.s <laughs> it's in the u.s yeah and yeah. You, you you were like the only person in your class so that i understand that could be a struggle i guess but but it's so powerful i mean obviously so good especially for the the boys that you teach so are you teaching at a school now yeah so i am currently in a school now for it's been for three years now so how it happened basically is while I was studying, we had to find schools where I can do my practicals. Okay. And so Delandi was, she has moved to Cape Town. She had her own school. So the idea was I was going to do my practicals there, but she then right. moved to Cape Town. And so there was no school I was going to attend at, but knowing Delandi, I sent in, we spoke to her and she spoke to the, the school as well. But then we kind of let it all also on God's hand, saying if the school does allow, it's more of you're going to come. But the right. school doesn't want you, then it's more of you have to stay in job and find a school there. Right. So it's been three years now. And I think, on how can I share on how it happened? Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. So as I was, of course, applying uh, with Lilandi as well, she, she did most of the side in Cape Town, basically talking about who Galeto is and how much work I'll do and, you know, but however, I wasn't sure it was going to happen, to be honest with you, because coming from Timbi, so like as much as you are, as much as I'm a dreamer, it's more on how would you arrive in Cape Town? How would you survive Cape Town? But it's more of, I would say, the support from church as well and the prayers. That's how I survived <laughs> with, with prayers from, from people and guidance from the Ecclesia. And I think we it was February the second, if I'm not mistaken. The school said I can come join them from the second. And so I think it was a Friday. However, I got the answer on Monday saying you're going to Cape Town this Friday. So it was more of everything needs to stop you like you just need to focus on this one thing right now you packing you saying goodbye to your family and trusting in god that you, i'm gonna be okay here yeah yeah that's a huge leap describe you said coming from timbisa can you like what what about that is challenging is it just because it's a long way or what, what, what talk more about that okay so timbisa is more a township and um and Johannesburg. So what's a town, more, what's a, and what does a township mean for those who don't know? <laughs> so it's more in a place where there's so much peer pressure, like there's drugs, and there isn't much growth as well. So like growing up also, it was more, I stayed in a tavern. So you know what a tavern is? Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. So it was more of that peer pressure of having to drink alcohol or not and having to take care of the family as well. But it was just, like the schooling in Timbisa was just different. Um, some educators are there, others are not there. And there isn't much, I would say there isn't, you, you won't see growth there happening. Like you'll okay. be stuck in Timbisa your whole life. You just need to prepare yourself and work on your stuff. Right. So I, I think you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but what my understanding of the townships are is that they're actually, you say a township and in, in South Africa, but it, you know, there used to be segregation where white people lived certain places and black people live other places. 
and those are the townships, right? I think they were called townships, so the places where only you know, the only certain places that Black people could live in. Uh, that is all like in the apartheid era. 90s. Yeah, right, apartheid era, yeah. So, yeah. That's what, again, I'm kind of, I'm actually, so, I'm kind yeah, of saying so for, the township. So the yeah. township is where black people lived and the suburbs was where the white people lived. So right. it was, there's a difference happening there. Yes. Yeah. And so that's the what, township is more, you can go. That's what, that's like what Nelson Mandela was all about in the nineties and stuff is breaking that up. And so, and so when you, yeah. I, I, I wanted to explain that because when you said, you know, coming from the townships, it's like, we have to, we have to kind of explain what that is. That's, that's the place there's oh. not been a lot of not, not a lot of investment or opportunity until really, no. really recently, I mean, even, you know, 25 years, really. So hopefully those, you know, we, we can help um, if it's Jesus' as well, you know, if yeah. it's God's will to improve those places. But you're making a big leap in your life, kind of leaving Tembisa and moving all the way to Cape yeah. Town. So it's definitely... In the suburbs as well, yeah. Did you feel intimidated or...? At first, there, were, there was doubt, I'd say. It's more of how can you, like I didn't share this as much, but then it was, it's a feeling that's inside saying, yeah. how would you survive Cape Town? Like my guy, you only, okay, I'm going to say this, like you are black and you're a male and you're going to go to this school that's a white school. And I'm sure they have like their own mindsets as well saying, like people who come from Timbisa are just drug users or the child abusers. And now you're coming to Cape Town at this school where it's more, you know, it, so it was, I had that feeling of how will I then adjust or adapt to it? How, how has, so, the, so, you, uh, so you're having that insecurity feeling. How did that, and how has it gone? It, it went good. Um, as much as I said, I think the support from the Ecclesia was quite, was quite right. good. Like they will always advise me and, I always think of Joseph as well, like just in the Bible on how yeah, as, about, much he was the, as much as he was the dreamer and his brothers didn't like him, but he knew he was destined for greatness. So with me as well, as much as I was just from this, like this black guy from Timbisa, everyone is going to have that mindset of who he is. So the only thing I had to change was not to change the perspective, but then have to be true in who I am as well. So with Joseph being sold into slavery and at the same time going to Potiphar's wife and also now being that guy that they look up to, like he likes the ruler now. So for me, as much as I knew those insecurities were there and my skin color was was kind of there as well, saying like I'm a black educator, how will everything go? But I also knew I am destined for greatness. You know, as much as I'm going there, I know I also have a purpose, which I think was God's purpose of me coming here. Like he's, we're following his word basically, I would say. Yeah, I think it's really, yeah. you're really saying something very interesting because I think you know, you could hear that and hear like self-confidence, like you're destined for greatness. Right. But I think that's that confidence, though, that confidence is important right? But because you do need to, you have to believe that you can change, right. And be that person yep. that you're envisioning, but all that is through God, right. Which is what you're saying. Like you, you said before I, before I took us to the, you know, the direction of the townships and stuff, you, you were saying that the, you know, it's, it's, it was through prayers and through God's, power that you have been you know have been successful no no definitely because like it's more of like you also mentioned like there isn't so much opportunities in Timbisa, right but then being a guy from Timbisa, i believe god chose me as well saying this is my son i have bigger plans for you mm -hmm. you know so with me also being baptized i think that's where everything slowly started coming to to plan like it, it, it was more of everything went according to God's will as soon as I got baptized like there's so many opportunities I I myself learned to go more become a better leader or become a leader as well I'm slowly learning to become a better leader now for the youth um but it's it was more of 
trusting in God. And I think having faith, like as much as we be living in faith, but letting things be in his control. I, I totally agree with you, but that's like, and that's why I was happy to hear, to hear this story from you because you're talking about, that's a big leap. You know, you took a really big leap and the only way to do that is, is through faith. Yeah. And do you feel like things are, you're still being taken care of? Or, I mean, obviously we all have doubts and stuff, but. Yeah, definitely. Um, of course we have moments as Christians or Christadelphians where you have like doubts, you wonder what's the next step now? What's going to happen now? You know, who sh can I still, can I keep trusting in you? I think as soon as you have that moment of doubt, for, for me, what I do is I do a Bible character, like I dwell more on that Bible character and break down on who they are and just read about them. I can then relate to what they've been through, but kind of also compare to the latest like generation of how people are living like. I still think he's still taking care of me. I'm still good. I haven't had COVID, so he's still <laughs> with me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was what was work like? I guess during the pandemic for you, teaching. So that was quite a big change, I would say, um, because as soon as we went to, we in South Africa we call it the lockdown. Like we had like a period of lockdowns. Yeah. So as that happened, uh, I think it was last year March, and we were still, we were still doing school holidays, but we were. We knew we were going to go to lockdown, but as soon as we closed schools and then it was March holidays. So how it happened was I was house sitting in Lilandi's house and they were down in Jovig. And then as soon as the president said, um, we're going to lockdown in like, I think four or five days, everyone needs to come back. So Lilandi then came back home and we decided I'm going to stay with them during that time because as much as I'm staying by myself at my place, it's I was just going to be lonely. So they invited me to their house. So and Michael, Zante and Lexi, we stayed all together there. And with the schooling, what happened was one needed to have Wi-Fi, uh, like unlimited Wi-Fi, which Uncle Michael had. And we basically went into digital schooling. It was easy. I don't want to go back to it. But however, I think having a lady there and also having a family, we, I'll, I'll call us a family, we're a family okay. of five. <laughs> yeah, having a family, it was quite, it was good because every, every night we still do Bible reading and we just connected as well. So we grew ourselves as a family. So teaching was from in the morning, I think it was 7.30 until 2.30. But however, it was so hard to teach online. Like imagine a four-year-old seeing you online, talking to them, having to do concrete work or something. It wasn't easy. No. So, but the kids kept looking forward to it um, because as much as they just want to see you, they just want to have a conversation. So what we did was we had different games organized, like PowerPoints. So we we'll should like we'll have a, a Zoom meeting or Microsoft Teams, and then I'll share my screen, basically share the activities I prepared for them and playing I Spy or singing songs or doing dance together. And one thing we also did was we did pre-recorded um, morning ring circle time. So where we talk about the weather, talk about the theme, and then we'll upload it and the children will basically watch it at their home. It was not easy. Right. No. Yeah. No, it wasn't easy, but we survived it. Yeah. Are you back in person now? We went back in person last year, third term. Okay. Yeah. So I think that was in September last year, 2021, 2020. Mm -hmm. When we went back, we were still doing both digital and also physical schooling. So that meant waking up in the morning earlier, <laughs> recording the video for those kids who were doing the digital schooling and then also carrying on with those children that are coming in from eight doing like a morning ring with them as well so it was quite 
you had to do two, two things. You had to teach online and also teach here physical as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that it was, was quite a different. Yeah, that's it been a challenge, challenge for. Yeah. That's been a challenge for my friends and brothers and sisters here who are teachers as well. It's been a pretty hard. The pandemic's been pretty hard on on teachers all over the world, really. Yeah, not definitely. Well, yeah, the thank you, thank yeah. you for sharing your story. I think it is in, it is encouraging you talking about how you know when we say have faith, it's different when we we really do give our life choices to God, like really follow His lead, not just kind of do what we want and pray to God. Sometimes you know, it's like you have to really yeah. give it all over. <laughs> no, not definitely. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks, Clit. So yeah, thank you again for joining us.